Imagine a man who can predict the future, not just tomorrow's weather, but the rise and fall of nations, the collapse of empires, the very shape of the world to come. That's the kind of power George Friedman claims to possess. Today we're talking about George Friedman, the man behind geopolitical futures, and the mind behind some of the most shocking predictions about our world. Now you might be thinking, what makes this guy so special? Well, Friedman's not just some random dude with a crystal ball. He's a geopolitical strategist, a former intelligence analyst, and the founder of Stratfor, a private intelligence company that's been advising governments and corporations for decades. He's also the author of The Next 100 Years, a book that caused quite a stir when it came out, predicting the rise of China, the fall of the Euro, and even the return of the Cold War. Before we dive into his predictions, though, let's take a step back. How do you feel about private companies influencing world events? Is there anything unsettling about the idea of a group of individuals deciding the fate of nations? Think about it. We're talking about a private company operating in the shadows, gathering intelligence, and whispering in the ears of powerful leaders. It's a little unnerving, isn't it? And Friedman is at the heart of this. He's not just a consultant. He's a trendsetter, a fortune teller, a man who claims to have cracked the code of history. Now you might be thinking, okay, this is interesting, but what exactly has he predicted? Well, the next 100 years is a fascinating read. It's a bold and controversial work that lays out Friedman's vision of the future based on his analysis of historical trends and the geopolitical forces at play. He predicted the rise of China as a global power, something that's undeniably come to pass. He predicted the fall of the euro, something that, while not completely realized, is a possibility that's been debated for years. He even predicted the return of the Cold War, something that seems increasingly likely with the current state of geopolitical tensions. And let's not forget his predictions about the U.S. Friedman believes the U.S. is in a state of decline and that its global dominance is coming to an end. He argues that the rise of China and other emerging powers will eventually lead to a multipolar world where no single nation holds sway. Now you might be thinking, okay, so this guy's a bit of a cynic, but he's just looking at the facts, right? Well, that's the question, isn't it? Is he simply observing the world as it is, or is he actively shaping it? The next 100 years wasn't just a book. It was a blueprint for the future, a roadmap that governments and corporations seem to be following. It's hard to ignore the impact it had on geopolitical thinking. But here's the thing. Friedman's predictions weren't just about the future. They were about power. He was telling us who would rise, who would fall, who would hold the cards in the coming century. And he wasn't just speaking to academics, he was speaking to the movers and shakers, the ones with the power to shape the world. So let me ask you this. Do you think Friedman's work is simply analysis or is it something more sinister? Is he a mere observer or is he a player in the game? Let's delve deeper into this idea of Friedman as a player. We've touched on his predictions, but what does he actually do with that knowledge? How does he use his understanding of global trends? Well, that's where geopolitical futures comes in. Geopolitical futures is Friedman's brainchild, his current platform for sharing his insights and predictions. It's a subscription-based service, like a kind of exclusive club for the elite, providing analysis and predictions for those who can afford it. Now think about that for a moment. Who gets to read these predictions? Governments, businesses, the elite. Do they use this information to their advantage? Or is it just academic curiosity? We're not talking about a casual blog here. This is serious intel, potentially influencing major decisions that affect millions of people. It's a whole other level of power. Friedman's not just writing a book, he's shaping the narrative, feeding information to those who control the world. And this is where things get even more intriguing. Friedman's predictions have been remarkably accurate. He's not just some armchair strategist. He's got a track record. But does that make him a visionary or a manipulator? Could his success be due to his insights or his influence? Think about it. If you're a powerful leader, wouldn't you want to know what the future holds? 
Wouldn't you want to be prepared for the coming shifts in power? Wouldn't you want to use that knowledge to your advantage? It's hard to ignore the possibility that Friedman's predictions are more than just analysis. They could be a form of manipulation, a subtle way to steer events in a desired direction. He's not just telling us what will happen, he might be influencing what does happen. And this brings us back to the original question. Is Friedman a puppet master, or is he simply a player in a game he doesn't fully control? Is he shaping the world, or is he just a reflection of its inevitable course? These are questions that demand our attention. We need to be critical, to analyze Friedman's work not just for its accuracy, but for its implications. Because even if his predictions are accurate, the power to control that information is a dangerous one. And in a world where the lines between observer and participant are increasingly blurred, we need to be aware of the forces that are shaping our future. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, the criticism surrounding Friedman's work. You see, he's not exactly a beloved figure in certain circles. Some see him as a neocon, a hawk who advocates for aggressive foreign policy, a man who sees the world through a lens of U.S. exceptionalism. Others point to his close ties to the U.S. military and intelligence community, suggesting his predictions are more about maintaining U.S. dominance than about understanding global trends. They argue he's more interested in securing power than in fostering a peaceful and equitable future. And then there's the whole predictive programming concept. You know, the idea that by predicting a future event, you make it more likely to occur. Is Friedman simply predicting the future, or is he subtly guiding us towards that outcome? Is he a prophet or a puppet master? Think about it. If you're a powerful player in the game, wouldn't it be advantageous to have people believe in your predictions? Wouldn't it make it easier to influence events if everyone thinks you're right? Some even go so far as to accuse Friedman of being a member of a secret society, a shadowy cabal that's pulling the strings behind the scenes. Is he just a cog in a larger machine, or is he the architect? It's all very intriguing, isn't it? It's hard to dismiss the accusations completely, especially when you consider the influence Friedman has and the people he advises. But let's not forget that he's also a controversial figure, someone who's constantly under scrutiny. So what are we to make of it all? Is Friedman a brilliant strategist, a visionary, a prophet of the future? Or is he a manipulator, a puppet master, a purveyor of propaganda? The truth, as always, is likely somewhere in between. Friedman is a complex figure, a man who has both the power to shape the world and the potential to be shaped by it. It's up to us to decide what we believe, to analyze his work with a critical eye, and to be wary of those who claim to know the future. Friedman isn't exactly a peace-loving hippie, is he? He's often described as a hawk, a proponent of aggressive foreign policy, someone who sees the world through a lens of power and control. And this view, naturally, has attracted its fair share of criticism. Some accuse him of being a neocon, a label that carries a lot of weight, especially in certain circles. They point to his close ties to the U.S. military and intelligence community and suggest his predictions are more about maintaining U.S. dominance than understanding global trends. They believe he's more interested in securing power than in fostering a peaceful and equitable future. And it's hard to ignore the fact that many of his predictions seem to benefit those who are already in power. For example, his prediction of the rise of China has been viewed by some as a way to justify a more aggressive U.S. foreign policy in the region. Is he truly a visionary, or is he simply echoing the ambitions of the powerful? Others point to his hawkish views on conflict. He's often been critical of appeasement and diplomatic solutions, arguing that force is sometimes necessary to maintain order and protect national interests. This perspective has led some to believe that his predictions are not just about understanding the world, but about shaping it in a way that favors a more militaristic approach. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so this guy's a bit of a hardliner, but he's just being realistic, right? And that's a valid point. Friedman often argues that he's simply analyzing the facts, 
that his predictions are based on historical trends and the realities of power dynamics. He believes that understanding the brutal realities of geopolitics is crucial for navigating a world where conflict is a constant threat. But is he just a neutral observer, or is he playing a specific game? Let's dive deeper into the man behind the predictions and explore the motivations that drive him. We've touched upon the criticism surrounding Friedman's work and the accusations of bias and manipulation. But let's delve deeper into the idea of his predictions themselves. Is he simply observing the world, or is he actively shaping it? This brings us to the fascinating concept of predictive programming. You know, the idea that by predicting a future event, you might actually make it more likely to occur. It's a bit like a self-fulfilling prophecy, where the mere act of predicting something can influence its outcome. Now, you might think this sounds like something out of a conspiracy theory, but it's a concept that's been discussed by psychologists and social scientists for decades. The idea is that if you believe something is going to happen, you might unconsciously act in a way that makes it more likely to happen. Think about it. If you're told that the stock market is going to crash, you might start selling your stocks, which in turn could actually lead to a crash. Or if you're told that there's going to be a pandemic, you might start hoarding supplies, which could create a panic that makes the pandemic more difficult to manage. So where does Friedman fit into all of this? Could his predictions be less about foresight and more about shaping the future? Is he telling us what will happen, or is he subtly guiding us towards that outcome? It's a tricky question. On the one hand, Friedman might genuinely believe that he's simply observing and analyzing trends. On the other hand, he might be aware of the power of prediction and be using it to influence events in a way that benefits him or his clients. This is where things get really interesting. Is Friedman a prophet, someone who sees the future and simply reports what he sees? Or is he a manipulator, someone who uses his understanding of the future to shape events in his favor? We're not talking about a harmless parlor game here. We're talking about global events, political upheavals, and the potential for war and conflict. The power to influence the future is a heavy burden, and it's a responsibility that Friedman, whether consciously or unconsciously, seems to be wielding. We've explored Friedman's predictions, his influence, and the potential for manipulation. We've analyzed his track record and the impact of his pronouncements. But let's now shift our focus to the ethical implications of all this. Is it okay for one man to have such a clear understanding of the future? Does he have a responsibility to use that power for good? It's a question that has haunted humanity since the dawn of time. The power to see the future is a powerful one, and it comes with great responsibility. But what happens when that power is concentrated in the hands of one individual? Think about it. If you knew the outcome of a war, wouldn't you want to do everything in your power to prevent it? If you knew about a pandemic, wouldn't you want to take steps to prepare for it? Friedman claims to have this knowledge, this foresight, but instead of using it to warn us, to help us prepare, he seems more interested in using it to shape events to his liking. He's more concerned with winning the game than in saving humanity. Now, some might argue that his predictions are just that, predictions. He's not responsible for the actions of others, for the way his insights are used. He's just a messenger, a voice in the wilderness. But is that enough? Can we truly separate the message from the messenger? Can we ignore the fact that Friedman's predictions are not just words, they're tools, weapons, that can be used to manipulate and control? Think about the impact his predictions have on global politics, on the stock market, on the very fabric of society. He's not just shaping the future, he's shaping our perception of the future. And that power, in the wrong hands, can be incredibly dangerous. So what are we to do? Do we ignore Friedman and his predictions, hoping they'll fade away? Do we embrace his insights, hoping they'll lead us to a better future? Or do we acknowledge the potential for both good and evil that lies within his work and to use his insights responsibly? It's a difficult question, 
and there are no easy answers. But it's a question we must confront, a question we must grapple with, because the future of humanity may well depend on it. Imagine a chessboard, but instead of knights and bishops, you have nations and empires. Each move a calculated risk, each player vying for dominance. That's the game of geopolitics, and George Friedman seems to have mastered its rules. He's not just an observer, he's a participant. He's not just analyzing the game, he's playing it, and he seems to know the moves before they're made. He's not just a historian, he's a strategist, a man who understands the levers of power and the intricacies of global influence. Think about it. If you knew what your opponent was going to do, you could plan accordingly. You could anticipate their moves, counter them, even control the outcome of the game. Friedman seems to possess this kind of insight. He doesn't just predict the future, he seems to be shaping it. But who is he playing against? And what are the stakes in this game where the future of the world is at play? Let's examine the power dynamics that lie at the heart of Friedman's predictions. On one side, you have the established powers, the nations that have dominated the world for decades, the United States with its military might and global reach, the European Union with its economic power and political influence, and then there are the emerging players, nations like China and India vying for their place on the world stage. Friedman sees this as a clash of civilizations, a game of dominance where the rules are constantly changing. He understands the historical trends, the shifting power dynamics, and the motivations of the players involved. He's not just predicting what will happen, he's predicting who will win. And that's where things get really intriguing. Is he simply observing this game, or is he actually shaping it? Is he a neutral player, or is he part of a larger agenda? We're not talking about a casual board game here. We're talking about the fate of nations, the future of humanity. And it's a game that has no clear rules, no guaranteed winners, and no easy answers. We've talked about the game, the players, and the predictions. But what if the game itself is rigged? What if there's a hidden hand, a force beyond our comprehension, pulling the strings? Imagine a world where powerful individuals operating in secret control the levers of power. They whisper in the ears of world leaders, influence policy decisions, and shape global events. They work in the shadows, manipulating the world to their advantage, their identities obscured, their goals shrouded in secrecy. This might sound like a conspiracy theory, something out of a spy thriller. But think about it. We live in a world where information is power, where secrets are currency, and where those who control the flow of information often control the world itself. And this is where George Friedman gets really interesting. He's not just a predictor, he's a player, someone who operates in the world of power and influence. He has access to classified information, he advises governments, he shapes policy. He's not just a commentator, he's a participant in the game. So is he simply a player in this larger game, or is he one of the puppeteers? Is he part of a hidden network of powerful individuals working together to shape the future? Is he a member of a secret society, an organization that operates outside the realm of public scrutiny? It's a chilling thought, isn't it? The idea of a shadowy cabal manipulating the world behind the scenes, pulling the strings of power, dictating the course of history. But is it so far-fetched? Think about it. Friedman's predictions often feel like they align with a specific agenda, a hidden plan. He seems to have a clear understanding of what's going to happen, not just in terms of geopolitical events, but also in terms of how those events will benefit certain individuals and groups. Is Friedman just a cog in a larger machine, or is he the architect of the system? Let's delve into the world of conspiracy and explore the possibility that Friedman might be just one piece of a much larger puzzle. We've ventured into the shadowy world of conspiracy, exploring the possibility that Friedman might be part of a larger, unseen network of power. But what if the system itself is designed to be manipulated? What if the very structure of our world makes it susceptible to hidden agendas and secret societies? It's a question that's haunted thinkers and philosophers for centuries. 
The idea that our world is not what it seems, that there are forces at play beyond our perception, that we are not truly in control of our own destiny. Think about it. We live in a world of complex systems, intricate networks, and hidden agendas. We're bombarded with information, constantly trying to make sense of the world around us. But what if the information we're getting is carefully curated, designed to steer us in a specific direction? Now let's bring Friedman back into the picture. He's not just a predictor, he's a purveyor of information. He's someone who shapes the narrative, who sets the agenda, who influences the way we see the world. But is he acting alone? Or is he part of a larger network, a system designed to manipulate information and control the flow of events? Could he be part of a hidden society, working in the shadows to shape the world according to their own agenda? We can't dismiss these ideas out of hand. The world is full of secrets, hidden organizations, and powerful individuals who operate outside the bounds of public scrutiny. Friedman's predictions, his influence, and his access to classified information make him a potential player in this world of intrigue and hidden agendas. We might never know the truth about his involvement in these hidden networks. But it's worth asking the questions. It's worth exploring the possibility that Friedman might be just a cog in a larger machine, a tool used by those who seek to control the world. Or perhaps he is the architect, the mastermind behind this elaborate system of manipulation. He might not be a member of a specific society, but rather the creator of one, a network of like-minded individuals working to shape the future according to their own vision. This is the world of conspiracy, a realm where nothing is quite as it seems. And in this world, Georges Friedman, with his predictions and his influence, is a player we cannot ignore. We live in a world where information is power. Who controls the narrative? Who shapes our understanding of the world? Could Friedman's predictions be less about foresight and more about manipulation? Are they a tool to guide us toward a specific outcome, or are they simply a way to maintain control? Think about it. We're bombarded with information every day, from news headlines to social media posts. We're constantly trying to make sense of the world, to understand what's happening and what's going to happen next. But what if the information we're receiving is carefully curated? What if it's designed to steer us in a specific direction? Now let's bring Friedman back into the picture. He's not just a predictor, he's a purveyor of information. He shapes the narrative, sets the agenda, and influences the way we see the world. But is he simply reporting the facts, or is he shaping those facts to fit a specific agenda? Consider the way we react to certain events, the way we interpret information, and the way we respond to threats. Are we acting based on our own judgment, or are we responding to a narrative that's been carefully crafted for us? Think about the fear-mongering surrounding certain geopolitical events. The emphasis on specific threats, the demonization of particular countries, the promotion of certain narratives. Is this simply a reflection of the world's complexities, or is it a deliberate attempt to shape our perception of reality? Friedman might argue that he's simply reflecting the truth, that his predictions are based on his understanding of the world. But what if the truth itself is being manipulated? What if the information we're receiving is filtered, distorted, and shaped to fit a specific agenda? We live in a world where information is power, where narratives can shape reality. And in this world, the power of prediction can be used not just to forecast the future, but to control it. We must remain vigilant, critical, and questioning. We've explored the possibility that Friedman's predictions might be used to manipulate and control to shape our understanding of the world and steer us towards a specific outcome. But let's dig deeper, going beyond the manipulation of information. What drives Friedman? What fuels his fascination with the future? What is his relationship with the past? Friedman is not just a predictor, he's a student of history. He sees patterns in the past, cycles of rise and fall, trends that repeat themselves throughout the ages. He believes that understanding history is key to understanding the future. Now you might be thinking, okay, so this guy's a history buff. 
What's the big deal? But here's the thing. Friedman doesn't just see history as a passive observer. He believes that understanding the past gives us the power to shape the future. He sees himself as a historian, not just of the past, but of the future. He's not just predicting what will happen. He's shaping the narrative, crafting the story of tomorrow. And that's where things get really interesting. Because if Friedman truly believes he can understand the forces of history, if he truly believes he can predict the future, then he might also believe he can influence it. He might see his predictions not as pronouncements, but as commands. Now this might sound far-fetched, even conspiratorial, but it's a possibility we can't ignore, especially when we consider his influence and the power he wields. He's not just writing books, he's advising governments, shaping policy, influencing the course of events. He's not just a historian, he's a player in the game, a man who believes he can rewrite the narrative. So what are we to make of this? Is Friedman a visionary who's trying to guide humanity towards a better future? Or is he a manipulator who's using history to further his own agenda? Is he a master storyteller or a dangerous player in a game of global power? The answer, as always, is complex and nuanced. But it's a question we must ask ourselves. Because the way we understand Friedman, the way we perceive his work, will shape our understanding of the world and our place in it. Technology isn't just changing the way we live, it's changing the very fabric of our world. It's shaping our economies, our politics, and even our very sense of reality. But how does technology factor into Friedman's vision? Is he simply adapting to the changing world, or is he actually accelerating its transformation? Friedman, despite his deep grounding in history, is no Luddite. He understands that technology is a powerful force, a force that's rapidly reshaping the world. He sees technology not just as a tool, but as a driver of change, a catalyst for both progress and destruction. He's not a technophile, not a utopian dreamer who believes technology will solve all our problems. He's more of a realist, a pragmatist, who understands that technology is a double-edged sword. It can be used for good or for evil, for progress or for destruction. Think about it. The internet, for example, has revolutionized communication, empowered individuals, and connected the world in ways we could never have imagined. But it's also been used to spread disinformation, to incite violence, to erode trust and undermine democracy. Friedman acknowledges this duality, this tension between the potential for good and the potential for evil that lies within technology. He understands that technology can be a powerful tool, but only in the right hands. He sees technology as a force that can amplify existing trends, accelerate existing conflicts, and reshape the geopolitical landscape. He understands that technology is not just a tool, but a force, a force that can both empower and disempower, liberate and enslave. And that's where his work gets really interesting. Because while Friedman is a master of geopolitics, he's also a student of technology. He understands that technology is not just shaping the future, it's shaping the present. It's shaping our lives right now. So what does this mean for us? How do we navigate a world where technology is constantly evolving, constantly changing the way we live, work, and interact with each other? How do we harness the power of technology for good while mitigating its potential for harm? It's a complex question, and there are no easy answers. But one thing is certain, technology is a force we can't ignore a force we must understand, a force we must learn to control. And that's where Friedman's insights can be helpful. He can help us see the bigger picture, to understand the forces that are shaping our future, and to make informed decisions about how we use technology. Is there a story that binds it all together? A grand narrative that explains the rise and fall of nations, the ebb and flow of history, the very shape of the future? George Friedman believes there is. He sees history not as a random collection of events, but as a story with a clear narrative, a plot with recurring themes and predictable outcomes. He believes that by understanding the patterns of history, we can predict what will happen next. He often uses the analogy of a chessboard, where nations are the pieces, and the game is played out over centuries. He sees history as a game of strategy, 
where those who understand the rules and anticipate the moves of their opponents are more likely to win. This grand narrative, however, is not a story of inevitability, but a story of choices. Friedman believes that while history has a tendency to repeat itself, there is always room for human agency, for individuals and nations to make choices that shape their future. But here's where it gets interesting. This grand narrative isn't just a history lesson, it's a framework for understanding the world and influencing it. Friedman believes that by understanding the narrative, we can better understand the forces at play and make informed choices that shape our future. It's like a game of chess, but with a twist. It's not just about playing the game, it's about understanding the rules, anticipating the moves of your opponents, and even shaping the board itself. So, where does this leave us? Are we simply characters in a pre-written story, or do we have the power to rewrite the narrative? Is Friedman simply observing the grand narrative, or is he actively shaping it? The answer, as always, is complex and nuanced. We are both actors and spectators in the grand narrative of history. We are both shaped by the forces of the past and empowered to shape the future. Friedman's work can help us understand the forces at play, but it doesn't dictate our choices. We have the power to choose our own path, to shape our own future, to rewrite the story of humanity. This grand narrative isn't just a story about nations and empires, it's a story about each one of us. It's a story about the choices we make, the actions we take, and the lives we live. It's a story that's still being written, and it's up to us to decide what the next chapter will hold. Friedman's predictions, even with their bleakness, offer a glimpse into the future. What kind of world is he painting for us? Is it a dystopian nightmare or a challenging but ultimately hopeful future? His predictions often focus on the rise of powerful nations, the decline of others, and the inevitable clash of civilizations. He sees a future marked by conflict, competition, and geopolitical tension. It's not a vision of a utopian future, but a realistic assessment of the challenges facing humanity. But there's a glimmer of hope in Friedman's work. While he acknowledges the potential for conflict, he also recognizes the human capacity for innovation, adaptation, and cooperation. He sees the possibility of humanity rising to meet the challenges of the future, creating new solutions, forging new alliances, and building a more sustainable world. Friedman's predictions are not a call for despair, but a call to action. He's not telling us to give up, but to prepare, to adapt, to be proactive. He's challenging us to be more than just spectators in the grand narrative of history, but to be active participants, shaping our own future. His vision of the future is not a guarantee of a peaceful utopia, but a reminder that humanity's fate is not predetermined. We have the power to choose our own path, to make decisions that shape our destiny. We can choose cooperation over conflict, innovation over stagnation, and hope over despair. This is where the power of individual choice comes in. Friedman's predictions might paint a grim picture of the future, but he also recognizes the power of individual action. He believes that even in a world of global power struggles and technological disruption, the choices we make as individuals can make a difference. So let's not be paralyzed by fear or overwhelmed by the challenges we face. Let's take inspiration from Friedman's insights acknowledge the potential for both good and bad in the future, and choose to act in ways that build a more peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable world. Let's embrace the responsibility of being actors, not just spectators, in the grand narrative of humanity. We live in a world where we're constantly bombarded with information, with predictions, with narratives. But who gets to decide what's true? Who gets to shape our understanding of the world? We need to question the status quo, to challenge those who claim to know the answers, and to think for ourselves. Don't just take Friedman's word for it. Do your own research, explore different perspectives, and form your own conclusions. We live in an age of information overload, where it's easy to be bombarded with news, opinions, and predictions. But it's essential to be discerning, to critically evaluate the information we consume, and to be wary of those who claim to know the future with certainty. 
Friedman might offer a roadmap, but it's not the only one. We have the power to create our own maps, to forge our own paths, to write our own stories. We need to be critical thinkers, independent actors, and active participants in shaping our future. We need to be skeptical of those who claim to have all the answers, and we need to trust our own instincts and our own judgment. The world is a complex and unpredictable place, and the future is always uncertain. But that doesn't mean we're powerless. We have the power to make choices, to take action, to influence the world around us. So let's not just accept the predictions of others. Let's question them, challenge them, and create our own future. Let's be the authors of our own destinies, not just the characters in someone else's story. We've explored the importance of questioning authority and thinking for ourselves. But let's zoom out for a moment and look at the bigger picture. Friedman, with his predictions and his influence, is a powerful player, but he's not the only one. He's just one piece in a much larger game. Think of it like a chessboard, but instead of just two players, there are dozens, maybe even hundreds, each with their own strategies and agendas. Some are obvious, with their names and faces splashed across the headlines. But others operate in the shadows, their identities hidden, their motives unclear. Friedman might be able to predict the moves of some of these players, but there are forces at play that even he doesn't fully comprehend. There are forces that are shaping the world in ways we can't even imagine. Imagine a world where powerful individuals operating in secret control the levers of power. They whisper in the ears of world leaders, influence policy decisions, and shape global events. They work in the shadows, manipulating the world to their advantage, their identities obscured, their goals shrouded in secrecy. This might sound like a conspiracy theory, something out of a spy thriller. But think about it. We live in a world where information is power, where secrets are currency, and where those who control the flow of information often control the world itself. Now let's bring Friedman back into the picture. He's not just a predictor, he's a purveyor of information. He shapes the narrative, sets the agenda, and influences the way we see the world. But is he simply reporting the facts, or is he shaping those facts to fit a specific agenda? Could he be part of a larger network, a system designed to manipulate information and control the flow of events? Could he be part of a hidden society, working in the shadows to shape the world according to their own agenda? We might never know the truth about his involvement in these hidden networks. But it's worth asking the questions. It's worth exploring the possibility that Friedman might be just a cog in a larger machine, a tool used by those who seek to control the world. Or, perhaps, he is the architect, the mastermind behind this elaborate system of manipulation. He might not be a member of a specific society, but rather the creator of one, a network of like-minded individuals working to shape the future according to their own vision. This is the world of conspiracy, a realm where nothing is quite as it seems. And in this world, George Friedman, with his predictions and his influence, is a player we cannot ignore. Can we truly predict the future? Or is there an element of chaos and uncertainty that we can never fully control? Is there an inherent unpredictability to the world that even the most brilliant minds cannot fully grasp? We've been exploring Friedman's world, his predictions, and his attempt to map out the future. But what about the things he can't predict, the things he doesn't see coming? What about the black swans? the unexpected events that can disrupt our carefully crafted plans and change the course of history. Think about it. The fall of the Berlin Wall, the 9-11 attacks, the Arab Spring, these were all events that no one saw coming, events that changed the world in ways no one could have imagined. These are the things that Friedman can't predict, the things that lie beyond his control. These are the things that remind us that the future is not a deterministic path. It's a chaotic dance a constant state of flux. But here's the thing. Even if we can't predict the unknown, we can still prepare for it. We can be flexible, adaptable, resilient. We can learn to embrace the unexpected, to navigate the chaos, to find opportunities in the midst of uncertainty. 
Friedman might have his vision of the future, but it's not the only one. There are countless possibilities, countless paths, countless futures. And the future is not simply something that happens to us, it's something we create. So let's not get bogged down by predictions, by the desire to control the future. Let's embrace the unknown, the unpredictable, the things that make life so interesting. Let's learn to navigate the chaos, to adapt to change, to create a future that's not just predicted, but inspired. We've acknowledged the power of the unknown, the inherent unpredictability of the world, and the limitations of even the most brilliant predictions. But let's not forget the power of human agency, the ability to choose, to act, to shape our own destiny. We may not be able to control the world, but we can control ourselves. A Friedman might have his roadmap, his vision of the future, but it's not the only one. We have the power to choose our own path, to make our own decisions, to create our own future. Think about it. We might not be able to prevent wars or natural disasters, but we can choose how we respond to them. We can choose to be compassionate, to offer help, to build a more just and equitable world. We might not be able to control the economy or the political system, but we can choose to be responsible citizens, to participate in the democratic process, and to fight for the values we believe in. We might not be able to predict the future, but we can choose how we live in the present. We can choose to be kind, to be compassionate, to be hopeful, to be engaged. We can choose to be the authors of our own stories, not just characters in someone else's narrative. We can choose to create a future that is not just predicted, but inspired. So let's not be paralyzed by fear or overwhelmed by the challenges we face. Let's embrace the power of choice, the power to shape our own lives and to contribute to a better world. We may not be able to change the world overnight, but we can make a difference, one choice at a time. We've explored the power of individual choice, our ability to shape our own lives and contribute to a better world. But let's remember that power comes with responsibility. We live in a world awash with information where predictions, conspiracies, and narratives abound. It's easy to get swept up in the currents of fear, uncertainty, and manipulation but we must be vigilant. We must remain critical thinkers, questioning authority, challenging narratives, and never taking anything at face value. We need to be skeptical, not just of Friedman's predictions, but of all those who claim to know the future with certainty. Be curious, explore different perspectives, and form your own conclusions. Don't blindly accept what you read or hear. Do your own research, engage in healthy debate, and never stop asking questions. Friedman might offer a vision of the future, but it's not the only one. We can choose to create our own future, one that is guided by our own values, our own aspirations, and our own sense of hope. Remember, the world is not a predetermined script. It's a dynamic, evolving story that we all have a role in shaping. So be skeptical, be curious, and never stop questioning. The future is not something to be predicted, it's something to be created. Thanks for listening. This is just the beginning of the conversation. What are your thoughts on George Friedman and his predictions? Do you think he's a visionary, a manipulator, or something in between? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this episode, please like and share the video so others can join the conversation. Until next time, stay curious, stay critical, and stay engaged.